Hey coach, welcome back to the podcast. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest content. And if you want to reach out to me, you want help with your soccer coaching business, then what's the best thing to do is go to the description below this video. And there's going to be a number of ways that I can help you or you can connect with me to get my personal one-on-one -on -one help with your business. So don't stay stuck. Make sure you visit the description below this video. Number of ways to connect with me via email, via WhatsApp, or if you if you would like as well, I do offer free a free 15 minute uh, consultation call. So don't stay stuck. Visit the description below. That's going to be the best way that you can communicate with me. And if you haven't yet, I say this on every video, but subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content. So today I'm going to be talking about how to make your soccer coaching business unique. Something that I get asked on a regular basis by a lot of coaches and trainers who reach out to me either through my WhatsApp number or send me emails is they start a business, they've got some customers, but they're struggling to separate themselves from the competition. They're struggling to have and create a unique selling point. So a unique selling point, essentially a USP, is what is going to separate yourself from the, the competition. So after answering a lot of questions, creating lots of videos on this, I wanted to just come on here and make a video specific to, to this. And there's three things that I want you to think about when you sit down you put your notes together and you think about when you're at the starting phase of your business or when you're looking to grow and you're looking to separate yourself from the competition now the unique selling point is essentially what makes your business unique what adds what is that one thing that adds value to your customers and what is that one thing that you do that no other trainer or coach in your area who has a coaching business is currently offering. So essentially when coaches reach out to me, they're, they're at two stages, two, two very common stages with their business. Number one, they're at the starting phase where they're looking to start their business, but they're not sure of what to specialize in or the other stage is right. They're working with, anywhere between five to 10 customers at the moment, but they're looking now to grow and scale, but they're, they're struggling to separate themselves from their local competitors, okay? So I want you to think about the, the following three things that I'm going to ask you today, okay? When I started my business, okay, my mentor helped me with this. So I wanna help you to, to to develop a, essentially a bit more clarity with your business, but also for you to, to understand that being different is the way to win in business. If you're the same as every other trainer, every other coach who has a coaching business in your area, then you're just going to attract either cheap clients or your business won't be able to separate itself from your local competitor and you might end up losing customers because what customers will essentially do is they will compare you on price rather than value. Okay. So what I've done here is I've made a couple of notes on my pad of three things that I want you to think about when you're, when you're at this stage and you're looking for your unique selling point. So the first one is what do you like doing? Okay. So as a soccer coach, what do you like doing? What is your speciality? Is it one-on-one -on -one training? Is it small group training? Do you enjoy camps? Do you enjoy clinics? Do you enjoy goalkeeping coaching? Right, what is it that you enjoy doing that you do at a really high level and you do with lots of energy, lots of love, lots of enthusiasm, lots of passion? Right, so what is it that you like doing that essentially breeds energy into you, okay? Creates that energy, creates that, that buzz that later on your clients are going to feel when they start working with you, okay? 
some coaches, what they do at the beginning stages of the business is they accept anything, right? Some of them will do one-to-one -one training. Some of them will do small groups. But then what ends up happening is that some coaches don't really like doing the one-on-one -on -one training, but they do it because they just want to make an extra bit of money. But that energy or that lack of energy, that lack of enthusiasm is felt by your customer. So first of all, you go ask yourself, right, to make myself unique, to have a unique selling point, what is it that I do really well, right? So what do I enjoy doing? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it small group? Is it open groups? Is it two-on-one? -on -one? Is it camps? Do I enjoy clinics? Do I enjoy goalkeeping coaching? So what makes yourself unique and what do you enjoy doing the most? Okay, that's the first question I want you to ask yourself. Second one is what are you good at? Okay, so what do you enjoy doing and now what are you good at? Now, there is a difference between the two because the first one is what do you enjoy doing is what the environment so what business model do you enjoy is it one-on-one -on -one? is it small groups is it groups is it camps is it clinics the second point is what do you do really well so do you enjoy technical training do you enjoy skills training do you enjoy speed and agility training do you enjoy athletic development right what is it within soccer that you do really well okay to give you an idea my business model, I enjoy working in groups, okay? And I enjoy reduced groups. So if you were to come to one of my sessions, all my sessions have nowhere, no, um, the numbers, there's no more than 12 players in each group. Why is that? Because I enjoy reduced numbers because I'm, I, I'm able to provide my customers with that personal attention I'm able to then do a six on six or three on three a type of small sided games with them as well, which makes it a little bit more realistic to, to the matches they play. So what is it that you do well? Okay. So that's something to think about. Are you good at motivating players? Right. Are you good at technical development? Are you good at the fitness side? Are you good at the psycho psychological side of the game? So what is it that you do really good that will essentially be something that separates you from the competition? So first one, what do you enjoy doing? One-on-one, -on -one, small groups, two-on-one, uh, camps, clinics, goalkeeping coaching. Right? What is it you, you, do, you're, you enjoy? And the next one is what are you really good at? Okay, What are you really good at? And what do you want to specialize in? Okay, again, to go a little bit deeper into this, something that I did with my business at the beginning when I was when I was first starting is I said to myself, right, a problem that I'm seeing with, with a lot of players and something that I do really well is I like the long term development model. So I like bringing players in who are just starting out or they're players that are playing for a club, but they might be in the B team, the C team, the D team. And I like to build up their confidence through technical development, small sided games, and an environment which is personalized to them. And what I like to see is I like to see the development in them over the course of time. So I like to attract players who are at the maybe the, in the intermediate level and get them to the high level where they can then go and pursue playing at the high school level, the college level and the, the professional level. Okay. So what I do really well is I work with players who are beginners slash intermediate. I like to make them better through technical development, through a personalized training plan. And then I like to get them to the next level where then hopefully we can find them a good club and then they can progress, get better and essentially get to the next level. So you've got to find out what do you do real well? What do you enjoy doing? Right. And the third one is, OK, what will people pay for? Right. What will your customers pay for? Hey, this is a really could be a broad question. 
right? But it's something that I asked myself when I first started. I did a thorough research in my local market and I was seeing, right, what are parents paying for? What are parents looking for? What do parents need help with? So at the time in my area, there wasn't a lot of small group training. A lot of it was either team training or one-to-one -one training. But I saw the value in small group training. It's still a personalized experience, but it gives you an opportunity. If you're working with play groups of maybe four to six players, gives you an opportunity to work on that tactical side of the game, which in a one-on-one -on -one environment doesn't really allow you to. And in a team environment, it's a little bit difficult because of the number of players on a team and also depending on what the coach wants to focus on. Also, small group is more, in, I found it more enjoyable. Players found it more enjoyable to participate in. And also, it allowed me to still create a personal type of experience for the customers that I was working with. Right, so what I said to myself is, right, I'm going to make these groups small, very different to team training, but very different to one-on-one. -on -one. I'm going to make it affordable so parents can do it. And also, I'm going to create a package and a membership program. So it wasn't just a case of showing up to a training session and then going home. It was, right, come, we, we train together once a week. And then when they're not away from me, they get homework given. I attend some of their, their, their matches. I offer them uh, workshops, which focuses not on the te technical side of the game, but more on the psychological side and we look at the tactical side as well. So that adds a lot more value and also uh, with the parent side, I offered them monthly uh, progress reports so they were up to date on how their child was progressing. Okay, so with the three things that I asked you today and with the three things that I shared, that should give you a little bit more clarity on how to separate yourself from the competition, how to make your business unique, and essentially how to build your unique selling point so that when it comes to selling marketing, you have something to work off. Okay, again, visit description below if you need more help with this. I will be able to help you right there. Okay, thank you for watching. And if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the latest content.